What if I told you that distortion on your subject's face is not caused by the lens or the focal length that you use? What if I told you that the distortion was caused by something else and not the lens? Now, you're probably like, I've seen the videos, I've seen the examples. So I would say, you don't know what you're talking about. Well, let me explain, okay? Now, when it comes to lenses, certain lenses, especially your wider lenses, the, the lens itself, physics, there is distortion, okay? So I'm not denying that at all. Certain lenses certainly have distortion. If you use a fisheye lens, for example, obviously there's gonna be some distortion. But when it comes to portraits, and what you often see and what you hear is, you know, you know, 50 is kind of like the baseline of where you want to start to be able to get a natural looking face without distortion. 85 being like that sweet spot. And then, you know, you kind of go up from there and it kind of goes in the opposite direction. And so you'll see the images of, you know, a 24 or a 35 and the face is pulled back looks very weird and it just isn't very flattering and so that's often associated to the focal length people are like if you use a wide angle lens you're going to get this distortion on the face the truth is the distortion and i'm going to say distortion with the air quotes the distortion actually comes from distance to your subject not the actual focal length. So when you see those comparisons, what you're seeing is people moving their position. And I think I maybe have done a video like this in the past, so I'm in this as well. But people will move their position to be able to frame the subject exactly the same with every focal length. So of course, when you're at 24, you're gonna be very close to the subject. If you're at 200, you're further from the subject. Where the distortion actually comes in is your distance to the subject. Now, the reason why I use air quotes is because in all reality, it's not actually distortion. It's just not what we're used to seeing. Now, if you don't believe that, if you're sitting next to somebody right now, or if you have a mannequin, I want you to get this close to the mannequin or to the person. And what you're going to see is their face is going to look exactly the same as how it looks when you see these examples. It's going to be pulled back. You're not really going to be able to see the ears. Your eyes aren't distorting the image. It's just not what we're used to seeing when you're that close. It just looks different. There really isn't any true distortion. It's just not what we're used to seeing. So it just looks weird. But the distortion really comes from distance. And in this video, I want to show you that and I want to prove that to you. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a picture of the mannequin at different focal lengths. I'm gonna do 24, 35, 50, 85, and 105, because I'm gonna use my 24 to 105. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go far back enough to be able to frame it at 105. That's gonna be the baseline. And then from there, I'm going to change the focal length and take the same picture, but I'm not going to change my distance to the subject, which means I'm not gonna to try to fill the frame with the subject. But what I am gonna do is in post, I'm going to crop the image to make it framed exactly the same as the 105. And what you're going to see is that the subject's face will look identical at every single focal length. So it really isn't the lens that's causing the distortion, it's the distance from the subject. Now, the reason why I'm making this video is because I want people to understand that regardless of what focal length you're using, if you wanna get a certain type of look, a certain type of portrait, you can do it with your lens, you just have to understand what to do. So if you wanted to get a picture of a if you want to get a picture of a portrait is what I was about to say. If you want to get a portrait of a person and you have a 24 or a 35, all you really need to do is back up, frame it a little bit wider, 
and then crop it in post. Now, in today's times, these cameras have plenty of megapixels available for cropping. So I know back in the day, people didn't like to crop. You know, you wanted to get it how you wanted it in camera so you didn't have to crop. Today's world where you've got 30, 40, 60 megapixels at your disposal, you certainly can frame it a little bit wider and simply crop in. And then that way you get the same look that you're used to getting with your 50 or your 85 or your 105, but with a wider lens. So here is the original shot at 105 millimeter. Uh, so this was framed in camera. Now I'm gonna go to the most drastic first. If I go to 24 mil, and I toggle that, you can see that once I zoomed and cropped it in to match the framing, it looks exactly the same. Obviously, there's a little bit of exposure shifting from the sun doing what the sun does, but as you can see, there is no distortion. Everything looks the same. I come to 35, same thing with 35. I come to 50, same thing with 50. And lastly, if I come to 85, same thing with 85. So they're all the same. There's no distortion. And one thing that I do want to mention is that you will have more depth of field with your wider focal lens. So even though you're going to crop this in and it's going to have the same framing as a more telephoto lens, your depth of field will be wider. So therefore your background blur will be less with your wider focal lens. So it is something to keep in mind. But outside of that, you really can get the same look with any focal length. Just back up and then crop in and post and you're good to go.